Hi, my name is Evan Nielsen from Nielsen Law Group and our subject for this segment is what to expect in an IRS audit. Uh, obviously that is a topic that is more broad than we'd be able to cover in, in a short YouTube video, but we're going to try and give you a sense for what you can generally expect. First of all, there are three types of IRS audits. The first one is a correspondence audit. This is basically one where the IRS has a question about your return, maybe two questions, and so they ask the information in the form of a letter, and they're asking for you to respond in the form of a letter as well. If you receive correspondence requesting clarification from the IRS, this is probably something that you can handle yourself if you understand the question they're asking and have the information that they're looking for. So just put it together in a letter back to them. Make sure that you send it to them in the time frame that they ask for and provide the details so that it's clear why you claimed what you did and then in many cases that will resolve the matter. The second type of audit is what's referred to as a random audit. It has no basis in your return. It's just that the IRS randomly selected you to receive an audit. And these cover just about everything on your return. They're very similar in form, except for the amount of scrutiny that the return will receive, to what's referred to as a field audit, which is the third kind of audit. And because the random audit and the field audit are very similar, we'll cover those together here. So if you're involved in a field audit or a random audit, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. <clears throat> uh, one of them is who the auditor is. Remember that they're probably just someone who's trying to be reasonable and who is just trying to do their job. So they're not your enemy and you don't need to take out your frustrations for being audited on them. But you do need to understand the nature of their job. They'll probably be under a great deal of pressure to complete the audit quickly. And they'll also be under pressure to meet their quotas of job completion and collection completion. The IRS is a collection agency. They are not your friend. They are not trying to help you. And while the majority of the people that I've ever worked with at the IRS are wonderful people that I, uh, in other settings, would very much enjoy, I understand that their job is not to make sure that the taxpayer keeps their money. Their job is to make sure that the IRS maximizes its collections. So they are part of the IRS collection process. They're looking for facts to verify the claims that you made on your return. And they're also looking to gather information from you that will help them to identify areas where they can increase the tax that the IRS needs to be paid. And they're trained to do this. So understand that that's where they're coming from in the audit process. You should also understand that the IRS itself is very powerful and so an IRS auditor has great power of discovery and they can make your life miserable. So it's usually in your best interest to be cooperative with the IRS as well. They have to follow the rules but they don't have to show you the rules and they don't have to help you assert your rights or know what to do in terms of the rules. So they are on the other side of the table and there's a reason for that. Again, they're not bad people, but their job is not to help you. It's to collect for the IRS. The audit itself is designed to be an intimidating process. And most of the things that are associated with it in the eyes of an ordinary taxpayer are designed to communicate that they would be better off to just simply agree to the auditor's claims and not fight the audit. But you do have rights. There recently was introduced a, a revised version of the Taxpayer uh, Bill of Rights is what it's referred to. But in, in an audit you have the right to a number of things. Among them, and this is probably your biggest benefit, is the right to representation. And I understand that probably sounds a little self-serving. But if I was personally being audited, I would not consider representing myself in the audit, even though I'm very familiar with IRS procedures and policies and the audit process itself, because the dynamics are wrong. When I'm representing myself, I'm a taxpayer. When I'm being represented by somebody else, then the examiner, 
who represents the IRS is working with my representative who is also a trained professional. So the approach to the audit almost automatically changes. And it's an unfortunate truth, but it is a reality of the audit process. So now a couple of things about the audit itself. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it's intended to put you off balance. But once you get those things kind of back to an even playing field by using your own representative, the audit process will go through the review of whatever the questions are on your return. And in that process, the things that are accurate, the things that can be supported, your representative should be able to get the IRS to accept. Those things that can't be supported are going to be denied by the auditor. And as a result, a new return will be calculated. That is a give and take. And in many ways, it's almost a negotiation. And so through that process of give and take, it's possible to establish an amount that's owed if there is any or a refund that is owed and so be prepared for a little bit of up and down in the process as well and if your representative is good they should keep you posted of everything that's going on but help you to understand where they are in the negotiating process once that is resolved then the auditor will issue a final report based on the things that have been agreed to with your representative and then that will determine whether or not there's anything that's going to have to be paid. At the end of the, the audit itself, there's always the opportunity, if there's taxes owed, to establish some kind of a payment arrangement or even to settle on the amount. So when you get through the process, then there is a way of addressing any tax liability if there is any. If there's a refund that's owed, then it'll be usually issued within 30 days. So one way or the other, the audit will come to a close. Most audits take between four and eight months simply because of the time that the examiner has and the amount of cases that they're working on. So it's quite a wait. And in some cases, it takes even longer than that. And your representative can use the amount of work that the auditor has to their advantage and to your advantage to help make sure that you get the very best results possible. In the end, if you don't agree with the results of the audit, then the supervisor for the audit department can always get involved. And then if that doesn't resolve any issues, then you can also appeal the results of the audit. And then ultimately, if you choose, you can take it to tax court. But most audits can be resolved far sooner than that. Hope that's been helpful in giving you a sense of what's involved in an audit. And I would also say that you should always remember that while it's an uncomfortable process, in the end, it will end. And it can be, in many cases, resolved in your favor. So just prepare yourself for the roller coaster and be patient, but make sure you choose a good representative and they'll be able to help you through it. Thanks again for your time. We hope this has been helpful. And if you have questions, feel free to contact us at any time.